understanding to the simple. As we hear your word this afternoon, let your word illuminate our hearts. Let your word give us insight and give us direction. Let God prevail. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, reading the Bible will be the title. And uh, some of us want to find out why some of us are not reading the Bible regularly. And I believe one of the reasons may be because you believe the Bible itself it's open to interpretations. That people may interpret it to suit themselves. Maybe that's why you don't read it. While this may be true to some extent, especially to scorners, as we discussed this morning, and mockers of the Lord, and to fools, because the fools have said in his heart, there is no God. The only interpretation that you and I can get from the Bible is the truth. The truth. Everyone reading the Bible, read it to find out what is the truth. Is that not the case? The truth about God the existence about God, the truth about marriage, the truth about health or healing, the truth about what, why am I here? Why did I come to know you? The truth about how can I make a difference where I am? I believe it's important. That is why I read the Bible to know the truth. So today we'll find out why reading the Bible. Why do we need to read the Bible? To find out more about God. What, are God, what has God said on a matter that can change my life? And why not reading the Bible also can put you in danger in this life? I remember 25 years, even 30 years ago, when I, because today is my 25 years wedding anniversary, but 30 years ago, when I finally found someone to marry, and being a pastor at that time, I also did a pastor in 1993. So being a pastor at that time, I was very careful. You know, I started with the ministry in the, at loose then. I was 1984. I was one of the leaders of the Agape Fellowship in uh Los Lagos University Teaching Hospital in Nigeria then. So I was just waiting for God to direct me. So I started reading the Bible because I want to know the truth about getting who to marry. How do I know who to marry? And of course, if you have been in the Lord that long, you'll be very careful not to make mistakes because a lot of people make mistakes when it comes to who to marry. Is that not the case? Uh, so reading the Bible really guided me at that time to know how to make a move. So I pray that if you are in that situation, decision, you want to make a decision on certain things of your life and you don't know how, I pray by the time we finish this sermon, you will know how. Amen. Reading the Bible. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, 
verses 10 to 11, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verses 10 to 11. Reading from the New Living Translation, that very night, the believers sent Paul and Silas to Berea. When they arrived there, they went to the Jewish synagogue and the people of Berea were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica. And they listened eagerly to Paul's message. They searched the scriptures day after day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. You see? They searched the scriptures day after day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. I wonder how many of you that have been listening to me for many years have been searching the scripture to know whether pastor has been teaching the truth. You know, if you have been doing that, you'll be better off today spiritually. But if you just go by every word that the pastor say and you just wrote it down, afterwards the pastors have said it, you are not growing, you will not grow spiritually. And that's the state of the church today. A lot of people just take whatever their pastor says or the bishop say. It becomes authority. In fact, some even prefer what the bishop say to what God has said. <laughs> but you see, let that change because if you really sincerely want to know the truth, you will know the truth from the Bible when you start reading it. And something will begin to happen. Something good will begin to happen in your life. So they search the scriptures day after day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. The King, New King James Bible says, these were more fair-minded, that is open-minded, than those in Thessalonica. So there's a comparison between this Christian and that Christian. One studied the scripture, the, st read the Bible. The other one just don't have time. But then, they're in that they receive the word with all readiness. They are eager. Why do you come to church today? Just to see your friends. They are eager to receive the word of God. Maybe, maybe that sister said, well, I've not received the keys yet. But I believe that God has done it. That's it. There's a readiness. Maybe God will speak to me today. Let me go to church. Let me be attentive. After all, God knows what I've been praying about. And if the word of God comes to me, because I'm ready, I will get an insight. I will know what to do. Is that not the case? That is how God speaks to us. So they receive the word with all readiness. So if you want the Lord to speak to you, receive it with all readiness. Be eager. Be attentive, be open-minded. And they search the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Number one, the Bible is not open to interpretations as some people think. The only interpretation is the interpretation of the truth. Amen? That's why we read the Bible. And that's why you should read the Bible. I want to know the truth. And you see, if you are a truth seeker, wow, God is the God of the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. God sees your heart that you are interested in the truth. And if you are a time waster, you are not even interested in the truth. You just, pastor said we should read the Bible, okay? God knows that you are not interested. And the truth will not be revealed to you. Because guess what? When the truth is revealed, you become free. Amen? You'll be free. So the Bible is not open to interpretations. It is open to the truth. If you're interested in the truth, if you're interested in the truth, you will get it. When the truth of a matter is known, it's like letting out a bird 
that has been kept in the cage. It's freedom. Have you been there before? It's freedom. You see, before my wife said yes to my me, my proposal uh, over 30 years ago, before she said that, I've already, I knew that she was going to say yes. How do I know? Because the Lord confirmed it through his word. In fact, to help her, I gave her tips. At that time, we used to have cassette tapes. But well, I don't know. Many of you should know. Cassette tapes. At that time, you know, in those days, you see, as if, uh, where, you see, it all depends on how readiness, how ready, rather, you are on the matter. So, but it's not too late, but Atkune can still give him tape. You can still give her tape, okay? All right. So, those tapes that I said was one recording was by, because I was, I, I came to know the Lord through the ministration of Pastor Kumui. Deeper life, uh, 1983. So, but I've been listening to a tape of a ministration by him, God the Perfect Matchmaker. And the other two, which I cannot remember their title. I see, I said I want the right person. And I bet, because Pastor is very, is still very handsome, there was a lot of people. A lot of people that are there. So I need to get some people out of the way. You know the, uh -huh. So I'm telling you, I know I know of a man of God that a lot of people were rushing, but so you need to get this thing right. Because once you get into their hands, you are in trouble. You see? So I got, got, the, got the perfect matchmaker, you know, and one, two others. Do you remember the titles of those two? No. Right. So I gave them to her before she said yes. Why did she take it from me, Brother Conley? <laughs> so you already know she's going to say yes. Is that not the case? Yes. Because if somebody's going to say no, I don't have time. But she, she took it. <laughs> you are just what? She was open minded. She was open minded, just as the people of Berea. You see? Right. Well done. So because she was open-minded, it, it, she made the work easy, isn't it? And then everything went into cooler. I was waiting, waiting for her to say yes. Because this is a contract you have to understand before you sign it. So she, I've already took my, I took my time. God said this. And God has to take his time on her to listen over and over again to that tape, using the word of God as well, to know whether what Pastor Kumwe said was right in guiding Pastor my, me, myself, to make that decision. That's it. And the word of God is there. With the word of God, if you understood it, you cannot make mistake. Because to make a mistake from the word of God will be that God himself was faulty. But God wasn't. So you have to get it right. Okay? So he said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So no surprise by the conclusion of the matter. I was not even at home when my father said something, somebody called me, and uh, no woman has ever called me to call me at home and speak to my father, you know, because there was a barrier. You don't just, you don't just come and say, no, no, no. So that's, that's, uh, I can't hear you. What do you say? Um, they, there were, but it's not this small mobile phone. It was like a big uh, handset that, which was very expensive. Yeah, very expensive. No, but it's not accessible as many of us get the phone today. So, and so I got the message through my father, my late father. So I knew. And uh, from the sound of what my father told me, 
It's not as if somebody just called my father and then he yapped him off, you know? So I knew that it's yes. So what's, what is there not to be happy about, you know? And so when I eventually uh, spoke with her, it was confirmed. So read the Bible to know the truth. Those who hide the truth are not free from that which comes to freedom. The people of Berea were more open-minded when they searched the scriptures. And this is the secret to finding, to reading the Bible. You have to be open-minded. And it's a, it's a, it will be a second nature for you. Why? Because you have to know the reason why I need to read the Bible. And that reason will be the motivation every day. So the reason why many are not reading their Bible is because there's no motivation. But if you have this motivation that I want to know the truth about my life. There's so many decisions that I need to make. I don't know where to start. But if you know what God has said on that matter, maybe that will ginger you to make it start true. And that is what motivates us every day to have the second nature of reading the Bible. So that's our title. Secondly, how often should you read it, the Bible? How often should you find out the truth? See, daily, day after day. Because the truth that you know is the one that will make you free. The truth you don't know personally, you will still be held as a captive. Until you personally know the truth of the matter, you'll be free. And that is the state of many of us. We are not motivated to read the Bible on a day after day basis. Why? Is it because we are afraid of the truth that the Bible says? Or is it because of conviction that when it tells whatever the Bible says, oh, I'm already guilty. No, no, no. God is not looking for people that are guilty. God wants to make us free from the guilt. I've been to read from the Bible, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, or 1 to 2. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who walk by the Spirit, isn't it? They walk after the Spirit, not after the flesh. For the law of the spirit in Christ has made us free. Everyone say free. From the law of sin and death. Many people today in the church are not free. They are not free because they don't know the truth. You cannot walk in the darkness. You cannot stay in a close place. Why? God has not given us the spirit of fear. But he has given us the spirit of power, love, and sound mind. So when you know the truth, you'll be free. And a lot of us, we pretend a lot. We are not true to ourselves. Rather than you coming out to say, I need help in this area, we hide. But as long as you hide, you are not free. And the devil knows you are not free. You know you are not free. So when are you going to be free? And you still come to church. So why don't you open up yourself, be open-minded to search the scriptures and find it out yourself? Is that not a good deal? Deal or no deal? That's how I took it up. Over 30 years ago, started reading the Bible. As I began to read, I began to understand who God is. I began to know the truth of a matter. I'm no longer afraid. I began to be bold and talk with respect to people. I remember one day a prophet said 
He just said out of nowhere, said somebody is going to die, not me. I was so polite. You know, I'm a very gentleman. I said, excuse me, come again. And he had the audacity to say it again. And quickly I returned it back to him. I said, in the name of Jesus, what you have said, go back to you. And this man ran away. The prophet, prophet ran away. Why? Because touch not my anointed, the word of God says, and do my prophet no harm. You don't have to be afraid of the wicked ones. Go with deal with the wicked people. But don't pray for their death. Pray for their salvation. Because if you pray for their death, by the time God promotes you, who is going to be your cheerleader? So you should pray for them, that they too will come to know the knowledge of the truth. So how often should we read the Bible? Day after day. If you're interested in spiritual growth, brothers and sisters, don't deceive yourself. If you are really interested in spiritual growth, you will read the Bible. The reason why you are not reading is because you are not interested in knowing the truth. You are not interested in developing spiritual growth. There's a song I used to sing. I don't know whether Sister T and others were singing it for our children. When I was a little child, that song says, Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, if you want to go. If you want to grow, if you want to grow, oh, oh, oh. read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day. Pray every day. Read your Bible. Pray every day if you want to grow. How many people want to grow? <laughs> I've been growing ever since. You see? And when you are growing, the sign will be there. Say, it shall be like a tree planted by the riverside, whose leaves never wither. But bring forth his fruit in his season. Where do we find that in the Bible? Psalm 1 from verses 1 to 3. So these are the way, if you are interested in it, you will read it day after day. Again, in chapter 4 of uh, the book of Acts, 19 to 20, chapter 4. Verses 19 to 20. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. Imagine chasing after shadows all your life. You are not yourself because you want to fit in with people everywhere. Is that a free person? Oh, you are not free. But when you know the truth, you are free. Here, Peter and John being criticized for preaching in the name of Jesus. And they, they, the critics told them, we want, you, we want you not to preach anymore in the name of Jesus. Said, is it right? I love the response of Peter and John. Is it right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God? You judge. So that tells me number three or four reason why you must read the Bible is for you to, it will help you to listen to God more. Because that's what Peter and John said. You judge in the sight of God. Should we listen to you more than we do to God? So that tells me that every one of us, if you really want to start recognizing 
the voice of God, it will come through your reading the Bible. Amen. Amen. You are not hearing from God because you are not reading the Bible with an open mind to find out the truth. Because when God speaks, you don't even know who's talking. Is that not the case? So, you see, that's the difference between hearing and listening. You can hear a sound, but when you listen, you take recognition of whose sound it is. And that's what happens when you begin to read the Bible. Say, you judge, is it right in the sight of God to listen to you more than we do to God? So when you, therefore, begin to read the Bible with an open mind, all those benefits that we have discussed earlier on, on top of it now, it will help you to recognize, to listen to the voice of God more. Verse 20, for we cannot but speak. I love this. We cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. They have seen it and they have heard it from the word of God, that the word of God works. Amen. You have been a living witness that God healed the sick. You have been a living witness from what Sister Chioma said now that God, by faith, she believed that God will give them the key and it shall be, shall be so. Amen. The prophet told the young prophet, Elijah told Elijah, you have asked a hard thing. You are asking for a double portion of the anointing because you knew I'm going to be taken to a way. You've asked a hard thing. But if you see me when I'm taken, it shall be so. But if you don't see me, it shall not be so. All things are possible to him that believes. It shall be so for you, my sister. And my brother there. Amen. It shall be so. And you see, they will come back and give testimony. That is just the tip of the iceberg. You still know what God is going to do for them by the time they get the keys of their new house. Amen. <laughs> you didn't get that. It should be so. It shall be so. So, number four, reading the Bible day by day will make you a living witness of what is true. But we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Is that not a living witness? When you read the Bible, you become a living witness. If you have found out the truth, you cannot but speak. Amen? How does it make you feel when you know something and somebody is saying something that is opposite to what you know? In other words, somebody is saying what is not true. How, do, how does that make you feel? Uh, apart from being angry, does it make it want to say something? It will propel you to say something. It will propel you to speak. It will propel you to speak, go spell. It will prepare you to speak. Go speak. You speak out the truth. You know, Jesus commanded or said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Make disciples of all the nations. Matthew 8, 28, verse 19. Matthew 28, verse 19. Make the disciples of all the nations. So if you read the Bible, you will go spell. Amen? You will go and speak. You will go and tell people. The reason why many are not preaching is because they don't even know what to say. And you cannot know what to say unless you read what to say from the Bible. When you read the Bible, you will know what to say. Amen? I wonder how people pray. Because unless you pray from what God has said from the Bible, all what you are saying in prayer is rubbish. God, you have to help me because I've been suffering. You will suffer till kingdom come. 
You have to tell God why God needs to help you. God, you said, whoever come to you, you will know why it's cast away. I have come. Lord, you said, according to Hebrew 4, that we should come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace in the time of trouble. Lord, this is my time of trouble. This is how to pray. Don't say, God, you have to help me. That sister got go to the United Kingdom after me. But I've been here before, but I don't have a job. So you will be there. Because you are not praying as if you know God. When you pray, you should pray like this. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Jesus taught us how to have a relationship with our Father, not their Father, my Father. Hallelujah. When you begin to become personal with God, your testimony will be personalized. Amen. You know, we say, that's what Sister Chilma said. That's what Brother Conley said. What about you? What about you? And that is why many people don't give testimony because they have no personalized testimony. But this will change today. Amen. The reason why you are not preaching, as I've said, is because you are not reading the Bible day by day. And you could see that affects your prayer life. Prayer life is not improved. It's not effective because you don't know what to say. You just think that God is a... Uh, sentimentalist God. No. God is real. You know, it is true. He said, we do not have a high priest who is not touched by the feeling of our infirmity. Yes, he knows our weaknesses, but at all points he was tested, but he did not sin. So Jesus felt the same way you are feeling, but he was not moved by feeling. He was moved by his God. He was moved by the faith that he has in God. You to be moved by faith that you have in God. That is why you must read the Bible. There are so many things I need to say, but because of my time that is here, I won't be able to say it. But let me round up by using this Ephesians chapter 3, verses 3 to 4. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 3 to 4. How that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I've briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. A mystery is a secret. It's a puzzle. It's a an hidden secret. But can be revealed by God to anyone whose mind is open. But I'll say the secret things belong to God. Deuteronomy 2020. The secret things belong to God. But those things he has revealed so God can reveal things to his people. But you must be searching. You must be hungry. Amen? That is what happened. Never you think you have forgotten. God is there. God wants you to be a winner. God wants you to be a victor. Now thanks be to God who always lead us to triumph in Christ. Victory is always in Christ Jesus. Amen? Victory is always... But this can be revealed to us. You can imagine this Apostle Paul telling us about the mystery of Christ, how he understood it. Was he one of the 12 disciples of Christ? No, he wasn't. But yet he knew about the mystery of Christ even more than combined the 12 apostles. Because as I know, he wrote two thirds of the New Testament. Paul. And he knew them because he was such a for them. And God revealed them to him by his spirit. God revealed them to him by his spirit. I want to read this out before I round up. There's this um, summation by one uh, of the preachers, someone called Edward Eddy, telling us about the need why there are spiritual adventure that when you begin to read the Bible, you become adventurous. You would want to do so many things for the Lord. Many of us, we come to church, we don't do anything. You know why? 
Because it is when you begin to read the Bible that you will know your worth. You will know what you can do for God. That's a spiritual adventure. So I'm talking to everyone here. Listen to what he said that you can learn from. He said, the worst thing that can happen to a Christian is to lose a sense of adventure in spiritual things. To those who walk closely with Christ, every stumbling block becomes a stepping stone. But you learn that from reading the Bible. It goes on to say, every adversity becomes an adventure. Without the recognition of this, one will sink into despair. One will sink into despair. In other words, one will become hopeless. How can the child of God become hopeless when God is the God of hope? It's an abnormality. That means we have to talk to ourselves. You start reading the Bible, you have hope. Let us pray. Today you have heard about why you need to read the Bible on a daily basis. Today you have heard about the things you need to look out for each time you read the Bible. Today you have heard what happens when you do not read the Bible. You'll be robbed of the blessings from the Bible. So I don't know whether you've been challenged. I don't know whether you still want to become a mediocre. I don't know whether you want to move up. Move up. I don't know what you want to do from, to, from now on. Whether your life has been challenged, whether you want to grow spiritually, whether you want to make a spiritual growth your portion. But with every eyes closed, with every heart open, please, why do you think this preaching is applicable to you? Why do you think this message you have heard is relevant to your life? And if they are relevant, what steps will you begin to take from now? Between today and next month ending, what step will you take on a daily or regular basis to make reading the Bible your second nature? You become a different man. You become a different woman. After all, it's not the pastor that will interpret the Bible to you. It is the Holy Spirit. But when your mind is open, the truth about your situation and what to do will be revealed to you by God. Please talk to God. Wherever you are, as you are hearing the word of God, it's applicable to you. Why do you think reading the Bible will change your life? And what must you begin to do if your life needs to be changed? If your situation needs to improve? Approach the word of God with open mind. Whatever the Lord shows you from his word, whatever truth that comes to you is for you. It's for you. I don't know who you are, but I believe I should pray for you. I want you to ask him, the Lord, to forgive you of your sins. Talk to him right now. He's there with you. Ask him to give you a second chance. Ask him to forgive you of those things that you know they are not right, but you've been doing them. You've been having your way. But now, the buck stop here. Ask him to show you his mercy and give you another chance. In that position, in that role, in that organization, that same organization, no, that same place. Because the word of God says, where you have seen shame, he has preserved, reserved praise for you there. So it's that same place you'll be promoted. 
that same place, ask him, if he can do this for you, if he can do this for you, you will do this for him. Talk to him. Talk to him. All things are possible. He will give you another chance to pass that same exams. It doesn't matter how long you have failed it. A righteous man, though he falls seven times, he will rise up again. I see you rising up again. Talk to him. Let God give you that second chance. Let God give him that second chance. Now, ask him, Lord, I will begin to read the Bible on a day-by-day -day basis. And I'm praying, oh God, I would approach the word of God with an open mind. Please speak to me through it. I want to listen to God. As I read the Bible, Jehovah, let me recognize your voice. Jesus said in this parable, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Jehovah, help me to hear your voice. Do you want to give your heart to him? Do you want him to be your Lord and Savior? Why don't you ask him? Jehovah, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. Please save me. Save my situation. Save my marriage. Save my health. Save my home. Save me, oh God. Talk to him. It's not the pastor that will save you. It's not the bishop. It's God. Talk to him. Because I want to finish this month well with victory. Jehovah, I know you can do it. Help me, Lord. Help me. Help me. I come to you. As that woman came to you, that woman that was caught in the adultery, the very act, and you had mercy on it, have mercy on me. Beloved, let's stand up on our feet, everyone. Let's stand up. Just talk to him. Please, I beg you. Talk to him. God is in the house. Just talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. This is a, this is, this is a transition now. Talk to him. This is a transition. Talk to him. This is a turning point. Talk to him. Jehovah, help me. I want to say bye-bye to that situation. I want to say bye-bye to that condition. I want you to help me. I want you to become my Lord and Savior. Save me. Write my name in the book of life. Make me a better woman. Make me a better man. Jehovah, make me a better son, a better daughter. Make me a better person. Oh Lord, from today. I want to give my heart to you. I want to give my heart to you. Now, give your heart to him. I want to surrender my will to you. Now, surrender your will to him. And ask him to give you his own heart. Ask for a new heart. David pray, change my heart, oh God. Make it ever clean. Change my heart, oh God. Ask him. To give you a new heart. After all he said. I will give them a new heart. And a new spirit. Give me a new heart. As your people are praying. Give them a new heart. And a new spirit. I surrender all to you. Are you surrendering it? Surrender it to him. Don't look at what people have said. Don't he listen to them. You are becoming a new person. Don't listen to them. Forgive them. And move on. You will become a, good, a new person. Just Surrender all to him. Ask him to save you. Ask him to write your name in the book of life. Ask him to give you grace, to nurture you and grow spiritually. To nurture you and grow spiritually. Make spiritual growth your desire. Tell him, I want to be better as a musician. I want to be better as a chorister. I want to be better as a minister. I want to be better as a pastor. I want to be better as a bishop. I want to be better. Whatever role that you occupy in the house of God, you can get better. Because when you stop getting better, when getting better is no longer your delight, you've come to the end of the road. I want to get better in my ministration. I want to get better as a soul winner. I want to help me to preach the word. Please ask him. I want to preach to all my friends. I want all the sinner friends that I have to know the Lord. 
and I'm not going to force it on them. I'm going to allow God to walk through me to make them born again. Talk to him. Through your lifestyle, they, something will rub on them. God will rub his anointing on them. They will start following. They will begin to follow you to your God. They will ask you, pray for me. Teach me your word. Teach me the word of God. When this begins to happen, give glory to God. Every one of us, we have a role to play in the house of God. When you read the Bible, you will know your role. Lord will bless you. Just thank him. Thank him. I surrender all. I surrender all. On to these of my blessed Savior. I surrender. Surrender it. Surrender it. Surrender it. Your husband, your wife, your children. Surrender it. The pain, the pain, the pain, the disappointment, the letting down. Surrender everything to him and let God, let God, let God lead. Lord, we bless you. Hear your people, oh God. Hear your people, oh God. Hear your people, oh God. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And so, Father, we thank you. Say, so whoever I come to you, you know why it's cast away. I bring your people to you. In our shame, in our disappointment, in our discourage, discouragement, oh God, in our letdown, in our joy, in our triumph, in our victory, Lord, in our hope, in our expectations, we come to you. Help us, oh God. We want to move forward in life. Help us to move forward. Let us finish this month with victory, with good news. We surrender all to you. Give us the grace to preach your word and let people receive our message. Give us the grace, oh God, to read the Bible on a day after day basis and give us understanding. Let us know when you speak to us. Help us. In Jesus' holy and anointed name we pray. Amen. Clap those hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so excited about, about it all. Please take your seat. Pastor Nikki, please. Quickly. Praise God. That message was very simple, but very impactful. 